Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Karen Lavender Clothesline. And truth be told, I am having a little bit of a schlump. <laughs> There's a good New York word for you. So lately, even though I've been doing all of the regular things, I'm moving a little bit slower. When that happens, I know to just chill a little bit because the big work is coming. And so today we're gonna just go out thrifting. I'm gonna kind of thrift more for fun just to see what's on the shelves because today is Thursday and tomorrow, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, I have three big days of thrifting, probably close to 12 hour days or however long the stores are open for. So today I'm just gonna take it a little bit easier, a little bit chill. I have a haircut, I'm gonna do that, probably get my nails done, go thrifting, and just have a really fun time. I'm gonna bring you along with me. So I'm gonna start by packing my lunch. I do this quite often, I'm just gonna pack a salad, and then we're gonna hit the road. Now it did snow this morning, so I'm not sure what the roads are like, but my Jeep is really good, four wheel drive, and it doesn't really stop me from going thrifting, which is a great thing. All right, hit that like and subscribe button. Let's go thrifting together. So we are up in Shillington. I did make it up this way. This is about 45 minutes from my house. And we are starting on the pink aisle. Here I'm just looking at a pair of ballerina slippers, ceramic bank. I thought that was quite cute. Sometimes it takes me a few minutes to warm up to thrifting. I get in the door and I get all excited and I always like to pick my favorite color aisle for the day. This is the pink aisle. Here is a gorgeous plate, Limoges, France. Now I have sold quite a bit of Limoges dishes and they take a very long time to sell. And in my opinion, they never bring what I think they're going to. Limoges France dishes can bring good money, but you really have to do your homework and comp them. A lot of the oyster plates bring good money. Uh, dishes with fish painted on them. The hand-painted ones are stunning. But as a whole, I do leave them behind. Here is another Victoria's Secret tote bag. Can I say that I don't think I go into a thrift store without finding one of these every time. No, I've stopped picking them up. Again, very saturated, and um, but I still like to look at them. So many of you ask why I do a voiceover and there is music in the background and a lot of screaming children, unfortunately. Here I'm finding a gorgeous ceramic or pottery, piece of pottery. This is Royal Hickman. I believe Royal Hickman also worked at um, Hager, Royal Hager Potteries in the 40s. And he also had his own pottery house in Florida. I just love this. I don't know that it's gonna bring a ton of money. My best guess is 20 to 22. Popping down the red aisle, there is something about polka dots I absolutely love. Anything with polka dots I take a look at. I do leave those behind, but I thought that would be very cheery drinking your coffee out of red polka dotted mugs. So right now I'm not really looking for anything special. I don't pick up a lot for Valentine's Day and I certainly don't pick up glasses that look a little gruesome. I don't know if this is a project. It looks like they were made with this strip design. I'm thinking that's not a good luck. So I keep moving on. Here are just two mugs. This is enamel over um, tin, I would guess, tin mugs or stainless steel. They're an advertising promo. Next, I see this fish dish. I always feel like Dr. Seuss when I say that. I believe this is treasure craft, but for the life of me, I couldn't make it out because number one, I didn't have my readers on. It is treasure craft. And number two, the pottery is normally painted like a brown glaze. So this whole thing stumped me. Didn't know if it was an unfinished piece, but this is treasure craft and the Hawaii little piece in there was crooked. So while I do pick up some vintage treasure craft uh, ceramics, I pick up the spoon rests and some of the bowls, I leave that one behind. Just a little music box with some bears. Again, very 80s, lots of 80s stuff in the thrift store. If 80s home decor really catches on, we are all gonna be rich. Here's a ceramic vase. 
it looks like something fairly contemporary. I really liked this design, but it was stumping me because it was so heavy. So I do pull the artificial flowers out and I'm trying to see if there's something else in this vase. But I think it was empty. This thing was so heavy. Very pretty, but I don't know that that really would have sold quickly. And I move on to this Asian pot. I think I really liked this because it had hummingbirds on it. And that about finishes the red aisle. Besides this little bird, these are very common. I think this is probably Target or Walmart, and he does have a little tiny chip. As I turned the aisle, the end cap had this figurine planter vase thing, and I always turn it upside down. It is old, but I am looking for the two blue crossed swords, which is Mycin. And now we are going down the green aisle. I'm not quite sure why I'm looking at this set, <laughs> but it did have an extra canister, so there was something. Looking at this beautiful Asian figurine, made in China, so not especially old. I thought she was very well done for an inexpensive piece. Sometimes when I see pieces I'm not sure about or I'm not going to run a comp, I think to myself, does the average household that I visit nowadays have these or would they have something like this? I don't know too many people that collect Asian or Oriental pieces. Now, it could be that my friends don't have that taste, but I try to keep that in mind. Like, who's going to want this item? Now, most times I am running comps for items I don't know, but I have found that a really good practice to say, would the average person nowadays want this piece? And here are three beautiful green glass bottles. I wasn't sure who was making them. This is kind of like jadeite. I don't think it's real jadeite glass, you know, the Fire King. But um, I do leave those behind. I felt like there wasn't enough profit capability. There's some birth month mugs. And now I'm spotting, almost going past two green bowls. Recently, probably within the past four to six months, I sold a very large lot of green glass. I did part it out and it blew through my store. So even though I didn't remember the name, I think it was Smith was the last name. I do put these right in my cart because this color sells for me. So because the quality is there, it's a heavy bowl, I go ahead and pick those up. I feel pretty confident that I'll be able to sell those and make a good profit. Coming down the brown aisle, which is still my favorite aisle, I find this Burwood piece. This is 1978 Burwood, B-U-R-W-O-O-D. As you can tell, it's plastic. This company made a ton of plastic wall decor. And even if you don't know the brand Burwood, I am sure you have seen this kind of stuff in the thrift store. And there are many train people, <laughs> train collectors, train lovers that goes right in my cart. I'm expecting 35 to 40 for that piece and it was in very good condition. And here we are just looking at a little, very inexpensive seashell teapot, which I did not find attractive at all, but I did feel curious about it. Zooming in on a mortar and pestle. I do still pick those up from time to time if they're the larger ones, the really big ones that you can make either guacamole in or salsa. Uh, they are quite heavy though, so you have to be careful for shipping if you're picking up stone mortar and pestles. Okay, I did love, 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 triple love this weather vane pattern. I believe that this is Edwin Knowles. I didn't read it too quickly, the weather vane. I really like the way the inside of the cups has this cocoa brown color. It just feels like you would have a very relaxing meal eating off of something like that. But unfortunately, the resale value is not there for those, so I leave those behind. But I don't know, there's something about that set I liked. Here's a little creamer. I have picked up dishes that look like this. I believe this is Sanyo. Could be wrong about that. Of course, it's missing its sugar bowl, but I really like that shape. And this is a Jenna Hall vase. 
Jenna Hall also, I believe, has some Asian, maybe, type items, vases, planters, things like that. I didn't especially care for this one. And again, no profit to be made on that vase. This little clock caught my attention. I wasn't sure if it was a mushroom or what was going on there. It amazes me that factories are set up and hundreds of people employed to make some of this stuff. Here's a plastic stained glass napkin holder. I'd love to be in the boardroom of that idea, like let's build a whole factory and make wood napkin holders with plastic stained glass inserts. I don't know, it's just amazing to me that people People have those ideas and they implement them. I thought this ceramic egg was especially good. Not that it was really high-end. I mean, it's not a Fabergé egg, but I liked the panda bears. Here I am twirling it round and round, looking for initials. Sometimes when these pieces are hand-painted, the person painting is allowed to put their initials on it. And I kind of like finding those. This one did not have initials. I'm not even sure if it was hand painted, so I do leave that behind. But with Easter coming, I am looking at more and more ceramic eggs, I have to admit. This little basket was cute, but I didn't imagine I could sell that for more than a couple of dollars. And I'm really trying to keep my average selling price up. And here we are looking at the yellow and gold end cap. This is applause. I still enjoy looking at single mugs, <laughs> but I have really, really disciplined myself. Very rarely am I picking up a single mug. So this one was quite dirty, but I did like this. I thought to myself, if there were four of these mugs, I might have picked them up. Very vintage. I loved the flat handle. I thought that was kind of cool. So we are continuing down the yellow aisle. And I am moving this picture frame to look at this tin. Not because these bring money. This is Marjolaine Baston. She um, did quite a bit of work for Hallmark. So there was everything in Hallmark from her line, which did very well. I think I even owned a few pieces in the 90s. Just a little nesting bowl set. I don't know where that was sold. I'm guessing Walmart. And now my eye, of course, is drawn to the wood animal figurine. First, I thought it was a rhinoceros. Then I thought it was a boar. And now I'm not quite sure what he is. But he has like a square tail. And it's reminding me of a Disney movie. And I couldn't remember what Disney movie there was an animal like this. So leave a comment down below if I am just being totally silly. And this is very obvious of what animal that is. You guys will tell me, I know it. I really like the yellow aisle. In the Goodwill that I go to most often, the Goodwill on Route 30, I don't know that we really have a true yellow aisle, but how can you not go down the yellow aisle and just feel encouraged in life? It's so sunny. I really, really like it. Here is just a wire basket. I believe this is meant to have a wine bottle in it and you pour wine from it. So that was interesting. I did not comp it because my attention went right on to these two ducks with straw hats. And then I found out they had bobbleheads or spring heads, even better. You can see Marshall's, it's an older label, but look at those heads go. So of course I had to play with them for a while. I am spending way too many hours in the thrift store. As I rounded the corner, I immediately spotted this gorgeous bamboo couch, I'm gonna call it, love seat, $24.99, I thought was an excellent price. Now, in my opinion, these cushions have to go or be recovered at, at least, because it's almost like a Tuscany print on a Florida tropical chair. But it was in beautiful condition. I would love to see these cushions recovered in something very fun with flamingos or palm trees. Palm trees would be great. Unfortunately, I do not have a lanai or a covered porch to warrant picking those up, and I am in Pennsylvania. Here we're down the orange aisle. I think this is just a piece of pressed glass. I don't even think it's depression glass. I think it's a copy. 
and it does have a chip. And then I've seen this copper craft type of thing quite often. This one is a music box. It sings uh, or plays King of the Road. And I did have to play with it for a while. I did not look those up. Now, I have sold a few pieces like that, but in my memory, I didn't get a lot for them, so I do not pick it up. There is a pretty tray, but right away I knew this was Lennox. Back in the day, I think Lennox was a thing. You know, women really collected, and men, I'm sure, collected Lennox, and now you cannot give it away for the majority of the pieces. Here are just two swans. Little vintage dishes. I'm sure the sticker probably said made in Japan. Could have said made in China, but I think that would be Japan. And I don't pick up too many swans. The swans I do pick up are either beautiful, heavy brass planters. Sometimes, in once in a great while, I will pick up a porcelain one if it's very big, over the top, ornate, and very well painted. Here's the tap test. Wooden apples. And you see these two angels on the top? I'm sure this is just from a mold. I don't know who wants those. Exactly. Oh, my stars. <laughs> I, think, I think another shopper must have set that up because those were scary. Here I was trying to be super patient. This gentleman was standing in this section for a good 15 minutes, and I really wanted him to move, truth be told, because there was something I wanted to look at. So I'm trying to keep distance. I'm trying to give him a little hint that I wanted to look at something. But I go ahead and grab the first one. These are drinking glasses, like a, a highball. And I really liked the silhouette pattern. Now I know for sure they're vintage, but what I didn't know for sure is what name was printed on this. So as you can see, like I said, a silhouette pattern of a golfer. I thought these were fantastic. Rimmed along the top in a silver. One of them was worn off, so here I'm checking it. And I could not read this, Len something, L-E-N. Hopefully I hold it still for you guys. I think I pick one up again. I'm not quite sure what that says. So if you recognize these glasses, would you leave a comment down below? Thanks, guys. Okay, I really don't like the black aisle. It's right up there with the clear aisle which I do discipline myself to do. So get ready, we're gonna do the clear aisle together. I really liked this candelabra, very heavy. If there would have been two of these, I would have taken this. Not quite sure, but it had like a restoration hardware feel to it. You know that real quality, beautiful, heavy feel in the hand, but unfortunately only one. And the shipping on that would have been really high. Just a little decorative mirror. And I think that about wraps it up for the black aisle. I was trying to make out what this was. It's Mikasa, and it is made in Japan. I thought maybe it was a maple leaf, or I don't know. Wasn't quite sure what that was. I do look at quite a few pots and pans. Basically, I'm looking for all clad and a few other names that escape my mind right now. When I know them, I see them. I have gotten very good money for pots and pans, but I am really picky about what I pick up because I do not like shipping pots and pans. This vintage type clock caught my attention. Big Ben, and that probably would have brought, I'm gonna guess $10 or under. Is there anybody that likes the Black Isle? I mean, if the Black Isle is loaded with electronics, I get it, but I don't know. It's just so unfun to shop the black aisle. And yes, I want to know what everything is. This is an extension handle. Here are 
with some extra pieces. This is Ikea. If the hardware within these packages would have been a little bit more hefty or something really of note, I would have picked those up. Ikea extra pieces sell really well. So if you purchase an Ikea piece and you have leftover hardware or brackets, don't throw them away. You definitely want to list them on eBay because there are plenty of times that people buy Ikea products and they're missing a bracket or they bought one of the um, clearance aisle pieces and they need the bracket. I know Scavenger Life, Jay and Ryan also pick up Ikea extra hardware pieces and that's where I've learned it from. Just looking at little silver pieces. That one is pewter. For me to pick up pewter, most times it has to be a signed piece from a recognized artist. I do pick up this plate and it has quite a bit of damage on the back, but very interesting pattern. Mother's Day 1974, a Hummel plate. I do still pick up the larger Hummels. Uh, some of the Christmas ornaments will do well. As for plates, I've really never picked them up. So it uh, could be a mistake on my part, but I don't feel that I've seen them bring high enough profit. Now these little lampshades, if these would have been in good condition, I would have taken these for $3. See how much damage is from the heat of the bulb? You really want to check that. But these little shades, I have sold shades like this, especially in an animal print, for $75 to $100. If they're really good material, like a velvet or a corduroy, and the insides are good, I would have picked those up super quick in my cart. Here is a woodcraft. I thought these were good. If they would have matched, I would have picked these up. But what are you going to do with one deer and one butterfly? <laughs> so I do leave those behind. I would have liked both of them to be butterflies. That would have been good. And now I see this piece. Again, I think this is just, you know, homemade. But I really like this. And I'm not sure if you keep fireplace matches, you know, the long matches in it. Or if this is for the kitchen to keep something in, maybe some plastic bags. But I like the pineapple print. I think pineapple means hospitality. I think the person making it did a great job. They even did a little bit of wood carving up top with a scroll saw. So in the cart, that goes very farmhouse country looking. And this blue aisle is looking a little scant, but I did like this dish. Unfortunately, it has damage. I would have liked the print to be something more interesting. And I see that it has the three marks on the bottom from being in a kiln. I forget what that's called, cone marks, or it could be a pontal mark, but I think that's just in glass. So if that didn't have damage and it was prettier, I would have picked that up. Here is a vase or a picture, I should say. I don't know what I was looking at here. No marking, and it had a very rough texture to it, and my mind felt like I should know what this is. Now, I could be wrong about all of that, but I kept looking at it. The texture was like feeling fine sandpaper or like an emery board. Quite dirty inside, and I wanted to know more about that. So again, guys, if anybody knows anything about that picture, that floral picture that was very rough to the touch, Leave a comment down below. Okay, somebody learning to do pottery. Looks like it might have been a wall pocket. And towards the end of the blue aisle, I see these very heavy iron, I guess they're owls, and they're like luminaries. And I almost bought them for my yard, but truth be told, I really don't have a lot of parties in the summer, in the evening, in the dark, <laughs> in my yard. <laughs> So I thought those were quite good. Probably Pier 1 would be my guess. And even though I have no idea of what this shelf sitter doll will bring, I fell in love with this thing. Fisherman Friend. I thought this was so good, and I was so happy to find him. Very heavy weight to him. 
There's a little tag there. I'll have to go back and read the tag. I don't know that it gave much information, but how good is he holding his fish catch of the day? He had a weighted bum, so he sat really nice on the shelf, like a little Parisian man gone fishing with his tam shanta his fishing pole, and the catch of the day in the cart. Get in my cart. How cute are you? Coming around the blue aisle, the end cap had a tall painted tray. I have stopped picking these up unless you find the really big oval, very antique ones. And they're so finely done. There's so much detail to it that those are the only ones I'm picking up. Oh, there's a sugar bowl, Sanyo. <laughs> it didn't match the creamer, but there it is. I liked that little dish. I don't know that it was anything, and I do leave it behind. Okay, I am guessing, yep, crate and barrel. That's what I was gonna guess. I love pattern dishes like this. I think these are great to keep by the front door, you know, like a catch-all. I have a lot of that type of thing in my house. I corral my sunglasses, my keys, on my vanities, I corral makeup or my brushes, all kinds of stuff. And I think a lot of other people do too. So I expect that will sell. Won't be a high profit item, but the pattern is really good. Okay, sugar bowl missing its lid. If I had a nickel for every item in a thrift store that I pick up, I would be a rich girl. Okay, this piece was super interesting because it had a signature that looked like it was mass marketed, but yet it looked homemade, but yet there was like seahorses and a beach theme going on, and I had no idea what this was. So interesting. Okay, they look like they need a nap. <laughs> Little starry eyed. So this is just like a mixed blue aisle, a lot of aqua blue. This was like a sleep blue set. I thought these would be great for corralling um, utensils by the stove. But I felt like, I don't know, I wasn't feeling it. I didn't feel like those were just going to, you know, be really eye catching. I think somebody repainted that with spray paint. And now my eye is drawn to this bowl, pedestal bowl, and I felt like if you put a candle in it, it would be really pretty because the top was punched out with snowflake design. But again, not enough to tempt me. And this next piece is just beautiful. I believe this is Limoges covered casserole dish and I'm not sure what the blue flowers are. It's not a cone flower. Who are my gardeners out there? Who can tell me what flower that is? So this is Haviland, which is Limoges, just beautiful. And like I said, Limoges dishes just do not sell for me, unless it's something super, super high-end and rare, which I think I've been able to get once or twice in my years of thrifting. They just don't sell. Okay, so I decide to put my big girl pants on and go down the glass aisle, and right away I see this dish. Now again, this is just decorative purposes only, but I really liked this. It was a porcelain little dish, great for soaps or putting your change from your pocket, and it had an iron filigree framework. Just beautiful in the cart. Stuff like that I don't ever comp. I think that if I use the proper keywords, you know, it'll sell just fine. Okay, and now my eye is looking at this sawtooth edge bowl. This thing had so much sparkle to it. I think this might be called American Brilliant Cut Glass. Is that right, guys? I am trying to learn clear glass, and I have to say I'm not a very good student. And look, it has a rock to it. How could a bowl that's so beautiful, high quality, 
not be level on the bottom. So for a while I thought, oh, it must be the shelf that's crooked. So I do try to balance it on a different part of the shelf. And no, it still had a rock to it. And I felt like it had either smoke on it. Here I am <laughs> moving it, still rocking. Like it was dirty because it had like a smoky color to it. And then as I look further down the aisle, I am seeing more pieces of this type of cut glass. So I'm hoping that my eye has recognized American Brilliant Cut Glass, which is not the branding. I think it's the type of technique. That's my understanding so far. And do not quote me on any of this because I could be very wrong about it. But now I decide to put the pieces side by side. I like to line up things when I'm trying to learn. Line them up on the shelf to see what my eye sees. And all in all, I think at the end of this exercise, there were like six or seven pieces. So we did have a half off sale coming up uh, the next weekend. So I am shopping here on, I forgot what day I was out, Wednesday, I'm gonna say. And I knew the sale started Friday and I said, okay, if these items are still here, I will buy them all and see how I do. But I got to the first day of the 50% off sale and they were all gone. So I left them behind. Could have been a very big mistake. Glass is something that I'm hoping to learn about, but not too much because it is not my favorite thing. But look how beautiful these pieces are. Very heavy. You could feel the quality. You don't need to know a lot about glass to know the quality of the items. And here I'm just really lining them up so my eye can take a look at them. Look at the amount of detail in these. So pretty. And I'm sure all of these patterns have names. Starburst or something like that. So we have this footed pedestal bowl. We have a round bowl that does not rock. It's nice and sturdy. Then we have the rocking bowl that we first found that seems off color. And now I'm realizing that's probably the same pattern right there. Then we have this gorgeous oval. And then my favorite is this globe circular bowl. As I continue looking down the aisle, <laughs> I now see another one. So now I'm thinking, okay, these can't be that valuable if there's so many of them. That last one did not have the sparkle that the other ones had. And I do know that this trumpet vase is called something, the pattern, cube, cubanism, cube, <laughs> cube something. I really have to get better at this, guys. So while this wasn't cut glass, I believe that's pressed glass, I do take a look at it. And here this tissue box is catching my attention because something like this I would normally pick up. So this is definitely vintage. Look at this roses pattern. Unfortunately, it did have a crack or I would have taken this. You'd be surprised how many people want that type of thing. And even though it might not be my taste, I'm always trying to hunt for what other people might want. And in this last aisle, I just wanted to take a quick look at this piece of pottery. This is K&K &K Interiors. I forget where this is sold. I want to say Kirkland's. Kirkland's is a home store by me in Pennsylvania. I think Kirkland's is only on the East Coast. Could be wrong about that. I did like that, though that blackbird or raven. And do you guys remember these crock pots? These used to bring crazy good money. Do you remember the orange ones with the mushroom print? Boy, I sold a few of those. So we used to get like 75 to $100 for these crock pots. I think this color, this deep orangey red was the most desired color. All right, guys, so that finishes up for this video. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. Go out and get what's yours. <music>